If the human race was to go extinct because of an alien invasion, a super volcano, an earthquake explosion, an incurable plague, an intergalactic civil war, at least that's kind of cool. It's not ideal, but I'd be okay with it because at least we went out fighting. And now imagine if mankind was to go out because we literally couldn't reproduce. We couldn't do the one thing, the one thing that all of our ancestors managed to do. If the human race was to perish just because we couldn't have kids, that's kind of pathetic. You might think the real problem is overpopulation because that's what they want you to think. Understand that the entire propaganda against having children is a psychological operation. It's a psyop. The academics, the elites and the media think that humans are a curse on nature. They think we are a cancer upon this planet. Well, the question becomes, what do you do with a cancer exactly? You might seek to kill it in one of many ways. You might seek to poison it and make no mistake, we are being poisoned. And let's look at the statement, there's too many people on this planet. As Jordan Peterson would say, that's the most implicitly genocidal statement you can possibly make. Because what do you do with a statement like that? There's too many people on the planet. Well, what do you do about that exactly? Do you genocide them? You force them to have abortions? Or perhaps you don't want to get your hands dirty, so you just shame them into oblivion. You shame people into not having kids. You shame them into living a life that's subpar because of your false ideology. It's more important than ever now to understand what's in our environment, what's actually poisoning us, and how to actually mitigate these toxins. I want you to answer some questions. Why has sperm count fallen by almost 50%, actually more than 50% in just 50 years? Why has the rate of miscarriage in women almost doubled in the past 50 to 60 years? Why has the level of testosterone in men fallen so drastically over the past half decade? Why has the age of puberty among women kept decreasing. That is to say, girls are hitting puberty earlier and earlier every single year. All this points towards severe endocrine disruption in our entire society. The clothes we wear, the food we eat, the water we drink, all have been poisoned to one degree or another. This is unacceptable to me, hence this channel. The question then becomes, can we fix the damage done to us? Well, absolutely, yes, we can fix the damage. The mainstream narrative is that in developed nations, people are having less and less kids because they choose not to. It's because women are more educated and they rather work rather than have kids. That's the narrative that's been fed to you. They say that because of this progress, this amazing progress that women don't want to have kids, and this is actually good for the environment, it's good for humankind. I call bullshit on their entire ideology. What's happening is a lot of people who want to have kids are not able to because their reproductive systems have been systematically poisoned. Luckily for men, it's a little bit easier for us to fix ourselves. You see men produce sperm throughout their entire lives almost. So if you take a man and you separate him from all the toxins, within a few months, the sperm which he produces is going to be healthy again. However, the truth for women is a little bit more harsh, which means it's more important for women to take care of themselves. Women are born with a finite number of eggs, which means that when these eggs get damaged, there's no easy way to replace them. While it is more important for women to safeguard their bodies against endocrine disrupting chemicals, it's also important for men. I don't want men to watch this and think they're okay and they're immune from the harm done by EDCs. That's not the case. All I'm saying is it's easier for men to recover than it is for women. And think about it, we have a significant advantage going into this. While most men and women have no idea what's going on and they're getting systematically poisoned, you and me, we're working on ourselves. We're working on educating ourselves and safeguarding our bodies from these toxins. Which means that me and you are going to be some of the most virile men on the face of the earth. And if you're a woman watching this, you're going to be one of the most hormonally balanced women out there. We are actively getting our hormonal systems back online. In 10 years, imagine where the average man and woman are going to be and where you and I are going to be. Another PSYOP is this whole men versus women type of dynamic which they forced upon us. This is not organic. This is not natural. It was never men versus women. It was always men plus women against the problem. You know, there's this ancient Greek myth. The Greeks thought that the gods created humans as a conglomerate, as man and woman in one body. These beings, these proto-humans were so powerful that even the gods were afraid of them. So the gods of Greece, they split them into man and woman so that they would be forever powerless and they could never oppose the gods. Very interesting, very interesting how that parallels to our society today. Men and women are more atomized than ever before, separated, they distrust each other, which makes both men and women far easier to control by those who see themselves as gods. The question of course becomes, are they poisoning us intentionally or is it just some fluke? Is it just because of corporate greed is just because of a consequence of industrialism and nobody actually knew what the hell they were doing. Well, of course, that's a possibility, but the truth is it doesn't really matter at the micro level. So in your level, literally what you can influence around you, your family and friends, 
At some level, it doesn't matter if there's a huge conspiracy or this is just the act of the invisible hand of economy. The actionable steps remain the same, then that's key. Don't buy into ideas which have no actionable steps, that's pointless. Focus on what you can do, get it done, fix your own hormonal systems, help your friends and family, and then we'll discuss what we can do at a societal level. The situation is not as hopeless as it seems. You see, nature itself is on our side. The universe wants us to win. If we spend the time to get ourselves hormonally healthy and rid ourselves of psychological operations, this is actually a problem that solves itself. Literally, evolution is on our sides. All those people who say it's bad to have kids, well, fine, let them not have kids. Let us who are invested in tradition, let us who are pursuing virtue, let us have kids. And our kids will be higher quality than theirs. Our kids will be smarter, stronger, wiser, more intelligent and more resilient than their kids. We will outcompete them at a genetic level. So we don't have to fight some kind of ideological war. When it comes to the psychological war, we actually have the upper hand. Time is on our side. Biology is on our side. But when it comes to the chemical war, time is certainly not on our side. We are losing the chemical war. Get this, there is birth control in your water. Women who consume birth control, they pee it out. Those molecules are not destroyed. Those molecules find themselves in the water filtration plants, which recycle the water, send it right back to your homes. Then we consume literal birth control molecules. Birth control is obviously a hormonal inhibitor. Women who are on birth control have the same menstrual cycle as a woman who is pregnant. Now think about this very carefully. Young girls are being prescribed birth control before they even hit puberty just so that they can clear up their acne on their face. If you know anything about young girls and even young boys, they'll do anything for appearance sake, right? They'll do anything to not appear blemished and ugly in high school. High school is freaking brutal. It's, it's completely understandable that young girls would accept putting birth control into their bodies in order to remove acne. They don't know any better, they're young. And their parents have been told that it's healthy by the fraudulent doctors who prescribe this stuff. It's actually FDA approved to use birth control as an acne prevention system, which is insane. Instead of using natural ways to clear your skin, they're asking you to take birth control instead. This should be criminal, and yet it's completely normalized. And even later in life, a woman who's taking birth control actually has her taste in men altered. So women who are on birth control, right? Get this. Women who are on birth control prefer more feminine men. In fact, it's even worse than that. Women on birth control actually prefer men who kind of look like their siblings. And most women who are on birth control don't even know this is happening. No surprise then that women who come off birth control in order to have a child with their husband realize their husbands are actually dweebs and choose to leave them. This kind of mass medication and mass altering of biological imperatives is evil and yet that is the norm. Men and women of virtue are not to be split apart by meaningless psychological operations. Rather, they should come together and create a bulwark, create a wall behind which to raise powerful children. These children will be better than us in every way. They will be hormonally intact and they'll be psychologically resistant. This is what they fear and for good reasons.